feeling a little philosophical today. I think it's the propel. But um, last night, I was having this conversation with my friends about relationships, and we just started talking about it. And I didn't know I, I thought so much about it, but after speaking to them about it, I wanted to talk to you guys about it, because see what you guys think. Basically, the problem was one of my girlfriends, she she's a lesbian, and she's with this other girl, and they they have affection for each other, but she thinks that the other girl's afraid of commitment, and at the same time, she wants to try a relationship with her, because she feels really happy when they're together, they both show affection to one another, and they both treat each other like a traditional girlfriend couple would. So she just wants to be able to take it to that next level. And so we're sitting around and I ask her, so if everything is fine and you don't have, I said she has any doubts about the relationship, she says no. I say, do you know that she really does love you? She says yes. Do you really love her? She says yes again. So then I ask, so why do you need to be her girlfriend? And she says, I just want to know that she's in it the way I am. I'm just, didn't you just say that you know she is? She's like, yeah, I do. So then I'm asking her again, so why do you need to be her girlfriend? Why do you need that title to truly know how she feels when you already do know how she feels without having the title of girlfriend? And it really just has a back and forth in our dialogue about how she's on saying that she wants it to show some kind of commitment even though they have that commitment without the, the title. And I was talking about how we have it basically programmed in our mind that titles like boyfriend and girlfriend and husband and wife somehow make the relationship real. As though just being together isn't the reality. It's actually being able to say that's my boyfriend, that's my girlfriend, that's my husband, that's my wife. Somehow that allows us to to really understand our relationship is through those tiles when we don't really need that. We really don't. Those are added pressures and added outside influences that make us think that. Because when you really look at it, when you put those kind of pressures on the people, that's when people start to break up. It's when you're in a place where you're both happy and you're both fine, but everyone is asking you, why aren't you together? Why aren't you boyfriend and girlfriend? Why aren't you married? I mean, how many times do you see two couples that have been together forever and everyone's just asking them, so when are you getting married? When are you guys going to get married? Are you guys going to settle down? Like, as if they're not already settled down. As if they're not already raising a family. Like, just as a celebrity example, you know, Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt, they're not married, but they live together, they have kids. Another example is would be um, Tim Burton and Helen Bonham Carter. Everyone's asking, when are they going to get married? Even though they already... They live next door to each other, they raise a family together, they're together. Why do they need to be married for people to understand that they're together? Why does this marriage have to be that keystone? And it really is society. Society has told us that this is how people show their affection to one another, and it's not true. We don't need those titles to be in a true relationship. We live it. We live our own relationships, and that's how we show love for one another. And like I told her, you're happy with her. I mean, she was texting her, and when she got texted back, she would be all happy and smiling and shit. Like, I said, that's it. You don't need anything else but that. You have that commitment. You have that love. You have that affection for her. You do not need to need that title of girlfriend to, to show that you're committed to each other. You already are. By the way you act with each other at this moment in time, you are committed. It does not matter if she wants to call herself your girlfriend or not. You don't need that official stance. Because it doesn't mean anything. And as a broader example, I told her, we've been in other relationships, like she's been in heterosexual relationships with boys, and they have meant nothing. You've been in, any time we've been in a relationship where we're cultures of boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, does it always mean something? You can not love a person and still be with them. You can not even care about them anymore and be married to them. You cannot feel anything for someone and still have them with you. It's not about us all the time. And sometimes people are afraid of commitment because of that reason. It adds on these kind of ideas that really don't make a difference, but sub subconsciously they do change the way you feel. There are expectations that other people have when you say, I'm this with this person. And whether you, you admit it or not, those pressures do sometimes affect the way you view each other. And it doesn't even need to exist. We don't need them. And 
it's just kind of one of those frustrating things where a lot of the problems with relationships today is that everyone wants to jump right into it. Everyone wants to be like, you're my girlfriend, you're my boyfriend, like my, my, my homegirl back home. Like, she's in California right now, and she's with this guy. And he wants to take it slow, but she's just like, I want to be his girlfriend. And I'm just like, you know, it's not even her fault, because that's how people feel. And he's saying that he wants to wait. And other people are telling her that because he wants to wait, he doesn't really want to be in a relationship with her, even though they're in a relationship pretty much right now without him really saying, you're my girlfriend. And they're putting all these pressures on her, making her feel really paranoid and self-conscious about their relationship. And like, it, you don't need to worry about that. You don't need to worry about that. And even if he says that he wants to date you and be your girlfriend officially, would you want to be with someone who automatically, as soon as they meet you, decide, oh, you're my boyfriend, you're my girlfriend, we're going to be together now? I'm not saying that being a girlfriend, boyfriend, and girlfriend is a bad thing. It's not. It's it's great that you find someone you have that connection with that you want to be with them in that kind of way. But you don't need to force it onto each other. You don't need to say that that's the only way to show your love for one another. My parents have been together for over 20 years, have lasted most relationships parents I know. I'm one of the few people that when I went to my high school and um, elementary school, both their parents, biological parents, were still together. I was one of like the handful of students that still that had that. And they've been together for 20 years. They only got married about three years ago. Not because it meant something to them. It, it meant something, but only on the basis that, you know, it was like that final step. But it really wasn't anything because they've been together. Nothing has really changed. The only thing, that, the only reason why they got married was for because my my great aunt was pushing for it partially, and and it's gonna sound really kind of cynical or whatever, but because of insurance, because they wanted to have each other's insurance, they wanted to make sure that if anything happened to my mom, my dad would inherit and that everything would be stay in the family. That's really the only reason why, and that's it they're still together they're still in love with each other but nothing has changed they didn't get married because they thought it was going to be this beautiful act of marriage even though it didn't mean something to them they got married so they could have each other's insurance and honestly that's really what changes you share things everything is now in the family everything is more complicated but at the end of the day as long as you love each other does it really matter if you're married or not no, it doesn't. If you love someone, as a matter if they're your boyfriend and girlfriend, as long as you two are together and you know each other and you know you're not cheating on one another, does it really matter? It only matters because other people say it does. If you were to tell someone that you're in an open relationship but you don't care and you don't mind it, everyone's like, well, you know he doesn't really love you, right? You know if he really loved you, he would not want to be with anyone else, right? You know that if he doesn't want to be your, your boyfriend or your wifey or whatever, that they don't really love you, right? It's other people. It's always been other people. Especially if you're a girl. Girls will always tell you some dumb shit that don't even make sense. Like, if he really liked you, he would wife you up and all kinds of bullshit like that. I'm like, what are you talking about? That's why I don't take love advice from other girls. Not offense to females in general. Because I think most of us are, especially people who are my sister are really level-headed people. But you know how it is when you have girlfriends. One, they don't tell you the truth all the time because they don't want to offend you. And two, it's just, it's complicated. Um, there's this episode of Daria, um, Daria, um, called Sappy Romance. It's in this, um, fifth season, episode two. And it's after Tom and Daria have gotten together. And the base of the episode is Quinn, who's like the superficial sister, realizes that it's Tom and Daria's anniversary. And daria had forgotten because she wasn't really thinking about it but now that she knows that it's technically their anniversary she starts getting all paranoid and shit and talking about how she feels upset at herself for caring and especially when she finds out that um with because tom used to be her best friend's boyfriend and it's all kind of complicated shit but before she finds out that she finds out that tom used to take jane places like a restaurant all these romantic things and she starts feeling upset and doubting how he feels about her, about how he feels like she's just a convenient girlfriend or whatever. And then it's revealed at the end of the episode that he only did those romantic things because he was starting to fall out of love with Jane. And he was just trying to keep the romance going. It wasn't had anything to do with real affection. It was just really to keep up appearances. 
and that the things that he does with Daria, which may not seem as romantic, are his way of committing to that relationship. And he, she would never have had those doubts if not for her sister. And I think that's pretty much how it is. We have doubts based on other people's expectations about how love is supposed to be for us and not based on how we view love for ourselves. And until we can learn to accept the fact that we have those things in the back of our minds and really realize how do we feel about relationships based on how our experience is, what works for you, and to realize do you really need all of that to be in a real relationship. At this point in my life, where I'm too young to even need to have to think about long-term relationships or something like that. Even so, I know that I'm fine living in the moment. I don't need those titles to make myself happy. I've seen my parents not use them and be completely content with their lives. And they're still together. They're still in love because they're two insane people and they deserve each other. But I've seen real love for people without the titles. And I've seen people with titles break up like that. I've seen people go with their boyfriends and girlfriends like they're fucking candy. And I don't need that. And I don't need some, I don't need other people to look at me and say, oh, that's your boyfriend, that's your girlfriend. Oh, you're not the boyfriend and girlfriend, so why are you together? Are you just sleeping around? You're just friends with benefits? I don't, I don't care what people have to say about me and who I'm with and what kind of way I'm with them. Because I'm content with myself. I know I'm happy. So I don't need you guys to tell me that I'm not happy because I don't have a boyfriend or a girlfriend or a husband or a wife. Fuck y'all. Not y'all, but people who say those things. Now, I know probably people are going to ask me, what's that stuff on your wall? So I'm going to tell you. Um, I got to move all the way back so you can see. Um, that's X2 from X-Men. That's Rogue, Black Cat, Emma Frost. This one on the side over there is Wolverine Fighting Blade. Um, this is Hope, Jubilee, Nate. Gray, Gambit, Electra, over here in the corner. This is the Biafia plushie, and you can't see it, but behind the Biafia plushie is a picture of Gambit. Um, moving closer, alternate. Okay, that's Christina Hendricks, Angelina Jolie, M.I.A., Michelle Obama, Spider-Man, Zoe Saldana, Katy Perry, Rogue, Gambit, Colossus, Half of Cyclops. And there's another picture of Christina Hendricks. And then on this side over here, we got... Don't know who she is. That's, um, Psylocke, Deadpool, Archangel. I forget who those two are. Quotes from all kinds of movies. Don't really know who she is, but I think her picture is pretty. We got other half of Cyclops, Nate Gray, Wolverine, Emma Frost, Psylocke, Storm poster for Unstoppable, because it's got Chris Pine and Denzel. Um, picture of Alexander Skarsgård. We got, uh, in that picture, a whole bunch of superheroes, including Iron Man and Thor and Wolverine and Spider-Man. And can't, I don't have my glasses right now, so I can't exactly see who's who. Um, Alan Rickman. Ian Summerlin. Um, Ed Westwick. Obama. Um... Johnny Depp, Robert Downey Jr., and Yaya DaCosta. And of course, Alexander Skarsgård. On ass. Okay. See you in a few minutes.